Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm really excited about today's video. Um, I'm going to be introducing Pulp in Python. I think that's how you say it. Um, basically, Pulp is a linear programming toolkit in Python, and so far I love it. And I've been able to do a lot of um, modeling problems, and um, it's really good if you want to do multiple integer problems. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to do like a quick little introduction. Um, and I'm going to start off talking about lists and dictionaries in Pulp, and um, I just want to remind everyone that when you're um, using Pulp functions, you want to type from Pulp import asterisk, um, and go ahead and check out my video on um, installing packages if you haven't already, and that will help you get started with Pulp in Python. So basically, um, lists in Python are going to be our sets in our linear programming problems. And um, they're the same as they always are in Python. It's no different with pulp. Um, you're, you're literally just making a list. So um, let's say we have a list of different ingredients for a diet problem. Um, so let's just call that uh, foods. And I like to make my letter my letters capitalized for the list just because um, that's how I learned to do it in class, and it just helps separate from the parameters. So um, you might say foods, and then I still like to keep these all capitalized. It's just um, honestly just easier to see. I feel like it can get confusing when you're doing all the constraints and the objective function, all that. It's just nice to have capitalized letters. So um, let's say oatmeal, chicken. Um, eggs, milk, and we're just going to keep it with that for now. Um, and then I want to pull up a specific problem I have here. It is a facility location problem. Um, so basically we have three different facilities, five different customers. Um, we have the demand of the customers. We have the cost, the transportation cost from each specific facility to each customer um, looks like we have a yearly activation cost at each different facility and then this M is um, the max amount that can be handled at each facility um, so obviously we're gonna need to set up our parameters for this um, and we're gonna need to input these numbers in some way um, but we're not gonna do that with lists um, we're going to actually do that with dictionaries, but let's just start off by making lists for these uh, customers and facilities, or in other words, those are our sets in this problem. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to use this specific problem so you can see how um, this might be applicable. So you could say customer equals, um, so we can also use integers, of course, in our lists. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And then our facilities, um, or you might just call it location, because it's our set of locations. So you could say um, facility one, just shorter than writing it all out. Facility two, facility three. So then the next thing we're going to need to do is cre create our dictionaries. Um, for the different costs and the demands and the um, max amount that can be created um, at each facility. So um, let's start off with this. Uh, let's just start off with a demand. So um, this is the demand of each customer, and we need to meet that demand in this problem. Um, so dictionaries, you want to start off with um, brackets, um, and you want to say, Let's just call this, uh, let's just call this, we're just going to use one uh, because we're referring to our list that we just made. So we have to use the same, um, whether we're talking about the facility or we're talking about the customer, it has to be the same as in the list that we just created. So um, the demand of customer one, we can't say customer one, that's going to mess up our problem. You have to use the same um, thing that we just created in our list. So, um, so for one, you're gonna do, um, you're just gonna type one colon and then whatever our demand is. So here it looks like it's 80. Um, then you do comma new line, 
the new line just makes it um, easier to read. You don't have to do that. Um, 270. I'm just copying exactly what it has right here on the screen. And I'm going to link this below so that you guys can do this problem on your own. But we are going to be doing this problem uh, all the way through in another video. Um, so look out for that. Um, five. And then we got to finish off with a bracket. So there we go. There is our, this is a dictionary. Um, I'm just going to type that so that you guys see. That is a dictionary. And these are our lists. Um, so then I'm going to do another pretty easy example. Um, let's say we want the max amount for each facility. Let's just call that max. And try to use something that's descriptive for your dictionaries and your sets or lists, whatever you want to call it. Um, so again, we need to say facility one, exactly what we have in our list. Do not rename it. Um, facility one is going to be 500. They're all 500, but um, facility two, 500. And in this problem, you may not necessarily need to make this dictionary since they're all the same, but um, let's say they were different, then, then we would want a dictionary. So we're just going to go ahead and make one. Um, and then our next uh, parameter gets a little tricky because it has two subscripts. Um, this I, you could say, is going to be the customers, and then the J is the facility. So from customer one to one, it would be C11, customer one to facility two would be C12, etc. Um, so you might be wondering how we're going to do this dictionary because um, right now we've just had um, one specific list and then those um, values. So what you're going to do, um, we're going to say, uh, we're, we're just going to call this transp for transportation costs, but you can call it whatever. Um, so we are going to start with, since, um, since there's only three facilities and there's five customers, we're just going to start off um, with the facilities as the first um, list. Um, it's just, it's just going to be easier to organize rather than doing the three facilities for each customer. Um, it'll just be a lot quicker and you'll see why. So you're going to say facility one colon and then you're going to do another bracket because now we're going to be specifying the cost for each specific uh, customer to facility one. So you're going to say, basically this is saying from customer one to facility one, it's going to cost four, and that's right here, um, comma, and then you're going to just go on to the next one. From customer two to facility one, it's going to cost five. I don't know if that's dollars per mile or what that is, but... Um, that doesn't really matter right now. Customer three to facility one, six. Um, I'm just gonna finish this line. Customer four to facility one is eight, and then customer five to facility one is ten. Um, finish off that bracket. Do another comma, and then our next line. So, and then you're just gonna do the exact same thing for facility two. Um, we're gonna have bracket dot 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 whatever um, obviously this would not work but um and then you're gonna do the same for facility three type in your numbers and then you just want to make sure that you have that outer bracket um, to finish off and you should it, you should see that um, the dictionary was created if it all lights up or highlights whatever when you um, finish off that outer bracket like it just did um, all right so there's that that's how you do parameters with two subscripts um, there may be other ways to do that but I found that this was the easiest way to do so um, and then I'm just gonna show you one more example very similar there was a problem I don't have it pulled up because it was a YouTube video that I saw but there in their problem it had um, different groves um, of something to different facilities um, and it had the bushel miles for each grove to each facility so same kind of thing there's two subscripts 
But um, in this case, um, it wasn't a, a string and an integer. It was just a string and a string. So you would do the same thing. It was something like Mount Dora to Ocala. And then it had the number of bushel miles. But um, I just wanted to show that so you know that it's just the same for the strings. Um, and yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for lists and dictionaries um, so far. There may be some other problems that have, um, there may need to be a couple adjustments, but um, so far this is all I've needed to know for all the problems I've done. Um, and hopefully that was helpful to y'all. Um, and check out my next video. We're going to talk about um, how to set the problem variable in pulp. And then we're also going to talk about how to set each um, decision variable um, for our linear programming problems. So I'll see you guys in my next video.